and we should be live. It's half past seven. We said we, it's 31 minutes past seven, actually, so we're actually a minute late. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Ross from Act On This. Uh, this is our second live broadcast that we are bringing you. Um, we're bringing you access to actors, casting directors, agents, directors, lots of people from the acting industry over the coming weeks and months that you can get involved with and talk to live. It's the 6th of November, which means it was bonfire night last night means the only thing to look forward to now is Christmas, and I've got a Christmas present for you guys. Come early. His name is Mr. Rob James Collier, Downton Abbey's evil butler himself. Rob, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome. That was a very cheesy intro, Christmas come early. <laughs> what, what if you don't celebrate Christmas? Okay, well, if you don't, well, I don't know. You can, uh, You've you not can thought it through. You've not thought it through, have you, Ross? No, you can celebrate any other religious <laughs> festival. Other rel- religious festivals are available. It's not just Christmas. Good to be uh, here, Ross. Good to be here, mate. So, all right, thanks for coming back on again. Um, Rob's taken part in, like, God, a good two other features for us on this uh, previously. If you like Rob and you like what happens tonight and you want to hear a bit more, if you get o- over to www.actonthis.tv um, and have a look in the podcast section and the live recording section as well, there's a podcast with Rob that we did. You were doing the second series of Downton, I think, at the time, weren't you? We did the podcast. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we did a webinar as well, which goes into incredible detail um, on Rob's acting career. And that's about, it's about over. It's over two hours, isn't it? It's got to be over two hours long. That it's just that basically because we're friends, you won't leave me alone until I do these things. So I have to do them. I just keep I just keep pestering, going, "Come on, Rob, you've got a successful acting career." <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, yeah, debatable. But, help, you know, me, yeah. help me get one up everybody else get one um, so <laughs> no well pressure. no pressure at all welcome guys and um, the whole idea behind these live broadcasts as i say is to get everybody involved um, and the reason um obviously the, the reason for that is so uh we you know can help you get further in your acting careers um, but the the way you do that is through twitter uh, now i've been putting links out all day on twitter and um, so i'm guessing a lot of the people who are here are on twitter um if you want to get in touch with us tonight you will see a twitter button just above us right Right now if you're on the page at on this TV forward slash live if you click on that it will open up a little tweet box um, you can write a tweet and it ask any questions on the acting industry at all it doesn't matter where you're at in your career as well if you're just starting off or whether you've been in the industry for years there's no stupid questions don't be afraid of asking anything um, that's what we're here for to help everybody um, so send us your questions and we're going to ask uh, answer as many as we can live tonight we're going to be here for about an hour or maybe a little bit longer if, if you keep Rob entertained it's all down to you guys basically so <laughs> The pressure is if on. There's any interest, basically. If there's if any not, interest. I'll just go to bed. Might as well. Might as well. There will also be a recording of this as well. If anybody has to leave our way through, please don't leave. But if you do, there will be a recording of this broadcast on the website sometime tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that if you want to have a recap as well. Um, so whilst everyone's getting their, their tweets in, Rob, um, so you need to tweet us, guys, at Act on This TV. As I say the button's above us. Um, but whilst everyone's getting their, their tweets in, Rob, let's just have a little talk about your latest venture, which is a website called evilbutler.com, and it's because you have decided you're going to run the 2014 Virgin London Marathon. Tell us why. Uh, well, basically, these, uh, I have a friend who's a volunteer at a local charity near me, and it's the Chilton MS Centre, and he asked me to come down and, and have a look and see what they do down there, and, and I, I've been down to the centre a couple of times now, and it's just a, a fantastic uh, centre run by about 95% volunteers, um, um, and it obviously runs on donations, um, and and it was quite moving to see people with MS helping other people with MS at the ve- the various sort of um, things they can do to help, like hydrotherapy, uh, oxygen therapy, and stuff like that. So it was it was very moving to se- to, to see, and I yeah. just kind of made. I said, if there's anything I can do to help, uh, please let me know, because it was it was like a little community. It was their community. It was a very positive place, and and it was a privilege to be there. Um, so I offered to help if, if there's anything I could do. I didn't think they'd ask me to run the London Marathon, um, <laughs> but they did. So it's a massive privilege. I'm, uh, you know, I've started training this week. I'm, I'm very unfit, um, but my idea was to create a sort of front door um, so people could, if, if they see me doing press and they like maybe what I do in the show or they like the show, could donate. I'm asking people just to give up a, a morning cappuccino or, or a latte or, or, or just a pound. Uh, and they go to evilbutler.com and you can go through there to justgiving.com or makeadonation.com. Um, okay, 
Well, yeah. we are, as always, nobody gets paid um, to take part in features with that's on this, guys. All the money that we uh, that we bribe people with to <laughs> take part in features with us goes to charity. So the £100, Rob, that we will give to uh, to you to donate will go to Chilton's MS Centre as well. And yeah. also, I spoke to um, Martin Hancock, lovely guy, at uh, Casting Networks UK today. Um, for all the actors who are watching this, um, I'm sure you will have heard of Casting Networks UK. Um, it's, an, well, it's Hollywood's number one casting resource that about just over a year ago came over to the UK um, and has started making waves in casting. Some of the biggest casting directors in the country are now using Casting Network software to cast some of the biggest TV programs um, on TV. Um, if you're not a member of Casting Networks, get yourself over to castingnetworks.co.uk and sign up. It's completely free. But they also do um, a premium side of the service as well, which enables you to do some amazing things with your CV um, that you can submit to Casting Directors when they put in briefs out through Casting Networks. Uh, you can add um, all sorts of media. Um, you can upload clips. One thing that's really cool is if you are submitting yourself for a role, um, Previously, it's not really been possible without sending a separate email to kind of um, maybe send something specific. Like um, there was a casting recently, a friend of mine went in for that was for a Sony commercial, and they had to um, be really proficient at skateboarding. Um, now it was a bit of a pain for him to kind of submit videos of him skateboarding. If he'd done it through Casting Networks, there's actually um, a way to submit clips with your resume. Um, as you're submitting for castings and things like that. Um, it costs extra to have access to that unlimited media, um, so you can upload stuff. But the guys at Casting Networks are giving us a £120 full 12-month subscription to the service um, that we're giving away tonight, and we're going to raffle it, Rob. Oh, brilliant. So, might be news to you this, but I had a word with Martin before, and he's all right with this. So basically, uh, what you guys need to do is, if you'll see on this page where you're watching this video, at actonthis.tv forward slash live, just below this, you'll see a Casting Networks logo, and there'll be a link to Rob's Just Giving page, which is justgiving.com forward slash evil butler. If you go on there, if you donate just one pound, that's all it's going to cost, minimum donation of a pound, um, what we'll do is we will draw one contributor at random, later on in about an hour's time and they will win the £120 subscription to Casting Network. So for £1, that's going to an amazing charity anyway, you have the chance to win um, something that can seriously um, enhance your acting career. What I'm going to do, Rob, I'm going to share my screen now Okay. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, you can donate more than £1 if you want, people. Oh, you um, can donate, absolutely. You don't have to, but you can. It's not just restricted to £1. <laughs> How many donations have you had so far? Um, well, it, the site's still young, so I think there's been about um, 15 or 20 donations. Um, nothing major, but it's, I'm planning to, um, you know, um, basically talk about it with any media interview that I do, so hopefully it'll pick up. You were on Jonathan Ross the other night. Why didn't you mention it? That would have been a perfect time. The, the, the opportunity um, did not ar arise. I did try and crowbar it in, but they were having none of it. Were you more excited about going on Jonathan Ross or just spending a bit of time with Ross tonight? <laughs> oh, it's you, Ross, every time. Of course. Now, guys, I'm going to share this website with you. This is evilbutler.com. So there's a, 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 a lovely picture of Rob there. Um, and you can also make a donation if you don't want to do Just Giving. I've put the Just Giving link on this page. You can also make a donation via Make a Donation, which is another sort of alternative to Just Giving. Um, so if you want to check out why Rob's doing this, and you can watch a video with the lovely uh, David Jason there, which I know we're going to edit, Rob. We're going to put a video of you on as well, um, explaining why... Uh, while you're doing this as well. We're going to sort that out. Uh, but get yourself over yet yeah, to evilbutler.com um, and sort that out. And the Casting Networks thing, just whilst I've got this up, this is really cool. Um, this is are an example. Are you allowed to show these people's faces? Yeah, this is all a demo. <laughs> this is all a, it's all a demo account. For those who want to know a bit more about Casting Networks, because it's not just another spotlight. I know a lot of people will think this is like, you know, oh, I'm a member of Spotlight, so this, you know, I don't really need to be a member of everything else. This is kind of different. And I say a lot of huge Casting Networks are using this now. Um, this is the view of what a Casting Networks would get from your audition. So you've been into audition, all these people here. Um, the lovely Andrea Bogart here has been into audition. Um, and normally the Casting Networks would just see your video, that's all they see of you on the day, so you go in, you do your casting, and they watch your video back, and that's pretty much it. Casting Networks gives them access to this section underneath the video here in the middle. If I click on this little cog, and I can go to uh, to resume, we can go through to Andrea Bogart's resume, um, and what it lets you do that no other service lets you do is actually um, tag clips next to your credits, so the Casting Networks might go, oh, okay, so they've been in such and such a thing. Um, if they click on play next to that credit, rather than showing just your full show reel, they can show just a clip of something that will be relevant, obviously, to that credit. Or, like I say, if you've got skills, like I'm a skateboarder, 
Um, you can upload your videos of you skateboarding or what other crazy skills you've got. My Casting Networks page should be knocking about here. So you go. There's a dashing oh. chap. <laughs> it. So there you go. So you've got. I mean, you know, I've got like a, you know, a clip from Emmerdale. So uh, I can just, you know, the casting director, you know, could play just a clip rather than just going through my, uh, you know, my full, um, my full show reel. So there's some really kind of cool new ways of getting yourself out there and promoting yourself. Like I say, to uh, have this media would normally cost you 120 quid a year. The profile that we're going to give away if you donate to Rob's charity. Um, is going to give you access to all of that, and you're going to get it for well a pound effectively well, if you don't, or more. It's, it's not my charity; it's the charity I'm running for. I don't own the charity. No, so. it's not. <laughs> Money doesn't go directly to Rob. No, it's, uh, it goes to the charity Chilton MS <laughs> Centre. But yeah, help out. It's only a pound, and like I say, you can, um, you know, you can come away with something that's worth 120 times that, and really help you in your acting career. So, Rob, before we start the actual interview, I know we've waffled on for ages now. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to have a look at the uh, at the tweets, make sure people are actually getting through to us. Um, yes, there you go. Sid Akbar Ali says, geez, made me jump with that announcement. So obviously uh, he's found the tweet button now. So he's, uh, yeah, so that's all working. Great, so, so the tweets are coming in. Um, Rob, like I said, we've done a couple of features with you before. Um, so I don't want to cover too much old ground. But for everyone who's new and just wants to learn a little bit about your acting career, where you've come from, how it all began, I met you in 2002 <laughs> at an acting class in Manchester. How could I ever forget? I've been trying to get uh, away from you ever since. I oh, know. I don't know why we kept in touch with it. I didn't really like you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we uh, we met in 2002 at an acting class in Manchester. Um, Rob Rob was incredibly entertaining, particularly as I remember doing Shakespeare, where he would actually make up his own words <laughs> and insert things into sonnets when he forgot his lines, such as blah de blah de blah. Um, pioneering, it Ross. It was pioneering. Well, it worked well for me. I thought he's all right. I mean, don't take yourself too seriously. So take us right back, Rob, before any of this began. You'd done a degree in business and marketing, hadn't you? You did a master's. What on earth possessed you to get into acting? Well, I'd, yeah, I'd done a business studies degree and then I'd done a marketing master's and I was working in an office environment and I just, it was the classic story. I just didn't feel like you know it was for me um, you know I wasn't getting stimulated by the work so I, I started looking for something else a, a hobby almost uh, outside of work um, and a friend suggested uh, acting classes so I literally looked at the yellow pages spotted the first acting school and, and, and started acting classes with well you were at it you know we'd meet yep. up once every two weeks wouldn't we and we'd it'd be about three hours long and we'd have to prepare a, a monologue or something like that uh, uh, and then yeah, and then dist then give deliver it at the class. Um, we'd all sit around, and then the teacher um, would uh, would he would dissect our performance, um, rip, rip us apart, and tell us how bad we were. Um, so it kind of started from there, and then I, I you know I moved, I went to various acting classes because one wasn't enough. Meeting every two weeks wasn't enough. I needed to practice more. So I found a few other classes again out of the Yellow Pages in Manchester, and um, eventually one of the guys. Um, Brought an agent down um, and a casting director, June West from ITV. June West, yeah, I remember that. Leonardo, um, and the agent took me on. Um, and then, sort of, three auditions in, uh, I got my first part as a regular on a, a BBC series that was in its fifth series called Down to Earth, um, alongside Shelley Conn and Ricky Thomason and Denise Welsh. And that was six months filming in Devon. So it was quite lucky, well, very lucky to get, to get started that quickly. Uh, and in the series, I went from very bad to just bad by the end of it. So <laughs> there was a linear improvement. So I thought, well, I've improved, so there's hope. And then it kind of just went on, you know, went on from there, jobbing, jobbing uh, actor, various parts in DL and Pasco, casually, and, you know, the usual uh, run of the mill. And then Coronation Street came along, and that was, you know, a big moment for me and gave me a, a chance to really sort of finesse um, my acting skills. Um because uh, um, there's not much rep theatre about. Um, and funnily enough, I we was talking to Julian Fellows, who wrote Downton Abbey last night, we were at a do, and he was saying, for many people, um, soap is the sort of entry point now, because there isn't these rep theatres. If you, if you don't go through the drama schools, you haven't got access to repertory theatres anymore. Um, so for a lot of people, and particularly uh, in, in the North, entry, uh, entry levels in soaps like Coronation Street, Emmerdale, Hollyoaks, you know, I've seen people go into them and leave and be successful. Of course, there's always the cases of the people who who leave and 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 don't go on to be successful. But that's just 
just part, look, I thought that was a very interesting point. Um, it is an entry point these days and a, fa uh, and a fantastic learn learning curve. So then I left Coronation Street and then turned down a lot of crap that I was offered. <laughs> right. Um, you know, sort of the, these two choices, I think, to go the personality route or the acting route. And I was very determined to go the acting route. And 15 months later, um, I didn't expect it to take that long. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, Downton um, came and I was offered the part. Um, and obviously, it's, and I've been doing it ever since. We've just, um, Series 4 is out now. And um, by all accounts, it looks like we might be filming Series 5 uh, in the new year. Right, well, you basically uh, just just summed up everything I was going to ask you on tonight's interview. So that's it, guys. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Well, you spent well, that was just a, that was a reference point to get from how I started to where I am. A quick synopsis. We can we can go we can in. Go back. We can go back. We can go back. I've got like five pages of questions here, Rob, that people have been send, sending in for you um, over the last couple of days on email and stuff like that, and quite a few. Um, Relate to some of the stuff that you did in you know in the earlier days. You mentioned of I mean obviously I remember you giving me that call. I was I was in my back garden actually in the summer watering some plants. You give me a call going, just got a recall for Corey. Been in for one audition now got to go in again. Um, and we were like right this is you know this is something that's, that's pretty big back then. Obviously you, you had a bit of experience. You like you say you done casualty. You had uh, can you give us your line that you had on Shameless? Okay, the line on Shameless. Uh, no, oh, um, I can't remember the Shameless one. There was, there was oh, what was the other one? The Bev Key, there was a Bev Keo cast me in, in my first sort of um, northern gritty drama, which was uh, I think it was went out eventually called Legless, and I had that three was words. It. What's that happening? Was What's happening, Candice? Right. So if you could deliver that as you did. Three words. If you could give us that, then. What's happening, Candice? Brilliant. There you go. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. See why I got the part, right? Precisely. So you'd had that experience, you'd done that, and then uh, obviously Corey's, you know, quite a, uh, well, it's probably one of the biggest shows on the planet. Obviously, I think Downton's, you know, just as big now, but um, it, you know, it's watched in terms of in terms of the viewers all over the world. Um, how was your kind of audition technique, I suppose, back then compared to it is now? What did you, how did you deal with with that Corey audition so early on in your career, kind of like, and and do you think you did anything differently to how you would do now, or? Um. Well, it's it's just I don't think much has changed, to, you know, to to how I do it now. Um, back then, um, you didn't get the script. I, I have more time with the scripts now, which is a blessing. But back then, it was the same. You'd break down your scripts into the thought process, and, and you know, it's often said, but what's the character's motivation for the scene? But basically, what's he thinking and meaning on every line? Broke it down, um, as as you do, as I'm sure everyone who, who might be listening in does, does as well. And basically, you have to try and get off book as much as you can. Um, yes. And then you can still have the script there, but just just leave it and try and you know just try and and live it as much as you can, despite the fact that there's usually somebody reading in who isn't an actor and who's really flat. But you've still got to ignore that and try and, and try and lift it. Um, and and that's Coronation Street. I had four auditions. The first one went well. The second one was terrible. The third one went okay, it went really well, and then the fourth one wasn't great. Do you know what I mean? So what? When you get recalled, just if you have one bad experience, you've still got another chance. Do you know what I mean? Because um, they've obvi they obviously see something in for you, in you. Sorry. So if you have a, a great audition and then they call you back and you have a bad audition, it doesn't mean it's over by any stretch of the imagination. So no. always stay positive. But the thing is, the trick is, is to just be off book and. Just try and listen to the other person. It's it sounds really easy, but just to listen, listen, listen to what saying and react. But I still can't do it now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I try to do it. That's the main thing. I'm sure you've got better. Going back to what you said about um, you know flunking an audition and not necessarily being out of the game is is, is so true. I uh, I watched an amazing video. I'll send you a link to it. It's actually I've actually put it on acts on this guys. If you go into the forums and acts on this, there's a, a video link to. Um, a round table with uh, the cast and directors of Breaking Bad and Dexter, and uh, and what they were saying is, um, you know, they would they would pull guys in that they knew were good. You know, they've got a body of work that was good, and they knew they were good. And sometimes, you know, they would just have a terrible audition, which everybody does. I'm sure everybody, the biggest actors on the planet, Robert De Niro has probably had a bad audition or a few no, he, bad auditions. He, he probably hasn't. He might have done. <laughs> anyone but him anyone but him but yeah but they were saying look you know it doesn't actually count you out because a lot of the time we'll fight your corner and go look you know what let's look at what they've previously done uh, and then you know they can obviously get you back in uh, if they want you to have another crack at it but yeah it doesn't necessarily mean well as you've just proven you know if your second audition wasn't great fourth one wasn't but your first and your third were um, yeah 
you and it's good for a lot. not to beat yourself up and even if you have an audition that how many of us has had an audition that it went brilliant you couldn't have done any better you walk you walk it on air as you come out and you still don't get the part yeah um, and I was look I auditioned for something in the past and I auditioned I thought it was a, a really good audition you know and it's very rare that I think that um, and I never got the part so I ended up beating myself up about it and then I met the casting director years later randomly and she said you were fantastic in that part and the only reason you didn't get it is you were too old. So I've been beating myself up saying, you know, I'm not good enough. It must have been this and that. My performance. It was nothing to do with performance. It's just they have an image in their mind, what they want. And, and sometimes it can be just down on a look. And I just look too old for that particular part. The problem is that we, that we all have, and everyone tuning in, is that you very rarely get that feedback. So, you know, you kind of, there is a tendency to sort of, self-destruct and, and question ourselves when a lot of the time it's just it's just a fact of the process you don't look like the character that they want to put on screen no reflection of talent so that's keeping that in mind as well is, is useful I think to stop you going mad stop you going mental no I think it's absolutely right and like you say you know you uh, I've had auditions in the past that I thought were fantastic didn't get it I've also had auditions I thought oh god um, and then I've got it. You know, yeah. so there, there was one in particular. I got a phone call 40 minutes after I'd been in. Go, yeah, you've got it. I was like, what? Are you sure? That, are you sure they've not got me mixed up with somebody else? Was um, that Fifty Shades of Grey? No, yeah, that was when I was playing Christian Grey. Yeah, <laughs> I, I pulled out of that now. I've let someone else do it. It's fine. Oh. Same thing happened for Superman as well. Let Andy Cavill do it. <laughs> um, but no, I think that's absolutely right. We've got one question here before we move over to Twitter. Uh, whilst we're just on the kind of like we're still related to the Corey thing, it's the last one on Corey. Um, is saying um, you said you were offered obviously a lot of stuff when you came out, which you didn't want to do. You could either go down the personality route or you could go down the acting route. And I, one thing I, I respected about you is I remember you saying to me once, because um, there's serious money in the personality side of things sometimes. But I remember you saying, look, you know, I'd rather go back on a building site, um, you know, than uh, you know than, than follow that route. Um, someone was asking here, um, how hard was it for you to get castings after Corey? Do you think? Um, you know, it took you a while to shake off the character of Liam as an actor, and you know how you went about that. There's, 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 there's no doubt that the, you know, there's a little bit. There can be, rightly or wrongly, I think wrongly in this industry, a bit of a stigma attached to soap. I think it's slowly changing because, like I say, I do think it's a massive um, entry level for a lot of pe people who didn't go through the traditional drama route, and I think a lot of young talent has has been found in our soaps. Yeah, big time. Um, um, and Giving that big, really long response, what was the question again? Because I've just forgot. <laughs> Did you find it difficult to shake off? Yeah. Uh, the character so there, Liam? There, there was a little bit of a thing, you know. It, it, it's on five times a week, so that character, he was a very well, he was a very well liked character, and I was very lucky in the fact that the the writers wrote really well for Liam, and I was blessed in the sort of storylines that I was given. But you know, there's a, there's a downside to that is that people can't shake it out of their head. So I always knew there was going to be a sort of cooling off period. So I'd, you know been sort of proactive in terms of saving up money so I could afford to wait for at least a couple of years and and turn down roles if they came in um, and thankfully it did come in eventually but it took a while 50 15 months you know and I happened to leave in the in the middle in the middle of uh, the biggest recession <laughs> in, oh, in mankind's God. history which um, didn't help you know because there weren't as many dramas being made at the time but you kind of hang in you keep practicing at home and, and, and you keep the faith and you hope hope that one part comes along and, and thankfully, thankfully for me it, it, it did yeah. So that's no, it's encouraging for everybody because it effectively in a way kind of puts you almost back on an even even keel with with the other actors who are out there when you leave a show like that because you know you're just back in the game aren't you, you still got audition you don't walk out of a soap and straight into something else it's not a matter of you know they're just being projects waiting for you is it? Yeah and there was one of the actors on Coronation Street said to me before I left which I always remember was um, um, your, your career is defined now by what you turn down as opposed to what you accept uh, and there's, there's a lot of truth in that if you if you panic and accept the first thing or you accept something that's not mes necessarily acting orientated but you can make a lot of money to me I think you've sort of devalued yourself and you're saying to casting directors you know uh, what am I am I an actor or am I a personality do, do, do you know what I mean I think to be taken seriously you need to focus on the acting route and stay focused on that route. And it is tempting because sometimes you get offered silly money for, um, to, to do things that are more around a media personality. But um, like I say, I think my thing was, and this might be completely wrong, acting, casting directors might not care, but my thing was I want to show them that I'm about acting. So that's all I'm going to take is paid work as an actor. 
Yeah, you did the right thing. You definitely did the right thing. It paid well, off, didn't it? Uh, uh, well, when you know, I'm still, I'm only 37. I've still got a long life to go. So you, you, you just never know. It's peaks and troughs in this game. So yeah. you've got to be grateful while you're in a peak, and then also remember the good times when you're in a trough because they'll help you get out. And it's uh, the, you know, when you're in the trough or the bad times, it makes you appreciate the good times even more. It, it's you know, it's cliche, but it, it is true. You need to remember yourself at the lowest point, and then when you get in, you don't take it for granted and you, st you, you stay true to your methods, you keep analysing the script, reading it, being off book, being professional and hopefully work leads to more work but it's not always the case. So you can't rest on your laurels. How many more cliches do I want to put in? Too many cooks, spoil the broth. <laughs> one, of the is worth, one of the and is worth two in the bush. <laughs> Something like that. Don't go think. Alan Partridge on me, Ross. Oh, tell you, oh, see, oh, oh my oh. God, Steve Coogan was actually on, uh, was on Jonathan Ross with you, wasn't he? How, how was, how was Steve? Give us a little bit of insight while I look at Twitter. Well, uh, you know, I, I didn't. We were backstage and we were filming, so I didn't get much to say to him. But I did have a few words. He was very, um, he was a very nice man, gracious man, and he's one of my heroes. So you know, it's always a pleasure to meet one of your heroes and them not be. Um, Stupid. Uh, I wanted to say a stronger word, but <laughs> you're putting this out live, so I better not, you know what I mean? Not, he was a nice guy, basically, and a funny guy as well, which you would expect. Absolutely. He's one of my heroes. I couldn't believe it. it was like, I can't believe Rob went on. I wasn't even invited to the audience. What's going on there? Can you believe it? I wanted to pitch the idea that maybe we could play brothers, but I didn't have the um, I didn't have the confidence. I thought, no, you've only just met him, Rob. Don't 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 look too needy and desperate too early on. <laughs> oh well, there'll, there'll be a next time. Right, I've got some tweets here for you, Rob. We're gonna hit we're gonna hit Twitter for a little bit before okay. we go back to the email questions. Um, Una Love, good evening to you. I've also got to do a big shout out whilst I remember. I'm gonna do a big shout out to Erin tonight. Um, Erin's from the states, Rob, and just basically loves you. <laughs> um, she, she, I don't Hello, think, Aaron. I don't think <laughs> she's an actress. Crazy. I don't think she's an actress, but I think she just, just stumbled. A stalker. I think she just stumbled upon this broadcast. Okay. Um, signed up for it, and uh, and yeah. So hello, Erin. Um, I don't know hello, what time it is where you're at, but hello. I hope it's not in the middle of the night and you've stayed up. Um, right. Okay. So let's go back to the acting questions. Una says, Rob, what's this is a hard one. What's the most important thing you didn't learn in acting classes? I didn't learn. That's a, that's a very good question, isn't it? Mm. Um, my uh, Basically, I'd say that was a technical side. You don't learn about lights on set, not to stand in someone's light, hitting a mark, you know, stuff like that. You also didn't learn to minimise or change your performance de depending on the size of the screenshot. Yeah. You know, if you're going in close singles, I was still doing really huge reactions when I started out, painfully huge, you know, more theatrical, thinking, yes, I'm smashing it. I wasn't. On TV, it was just magnified. And um, they, those were things, you, it's very hard to pick them things up. You can only learn them on the job. Yeah. So, they, they were, yeah, the most important thing I didn't learn was, was the, the technical side, hitting your marks, watching other people's light, and just nuancing your reactions depending on the size of the shot. So when you go wide, you need to pick it up a bit more, otherwise it's just two people being completely still on a screen. Good question, though. It's a great, it's a great answer, that, though, as well, because, yeah, no, no I don't know about the answer. <laughs> but the think, question was good. I think that's all right, definitely, because do you find that more in terms of reaction and stuff in, obviously, Downton being period, um, you know, obviously not contemporary, is it... I don't know, almost kind of like a different style that you had to adopt for that as well in terms of what you can do with your face. Because, oh, definitely. You know. um, we had a historical advisor, um, Alistair Bruce, who's a legend. Uh, Yoda, we call him. Um, right. Or, or, or God. Um, uh, or the Oracle. And he was basically very into the etiquette, the posture and the body language at the time. There was limited movement. And you can probably see tonight, I'm, I'm quite, I, I articulate a lot, a lot through my hands and stuff like that and, and gesticulate a lot. Um, that all that all has to go. There's a stillness you may, need right throughout your body. You need to be you hold yourself right, and that completely changes how you deliver because you can't use certain things to express an emotion because your body language is completely changed. So in many ways, it all has to come from from the eyes, which makes it, I think, a lot harder, but also more of a learning curve. Um, you know, if you can, if you can't move your body, you can't express yourself through physicality. It has to come through the eyes, which you know, everyone knows, are the key to the soul. So it's a great learning curve for that. It's a provide a stillness that, you know, that the best actors have. And I'm not saying I am. I'm nowhere near that. But I look at people like um, Alec Guinness, um, 
um, Anthony Hopkins, for they have it in spades, that stillness. Less is yeah, more. Yeah. And being in a period show and you're having to observe the correct body language and etiquette of the time, you, ha you have no choice but to do less is more. Because if you start articulating and using modernistic e expressions, Alistair Bruce will beat you with a big stick during a take. So he'll, Alistair will be on, on, on cue ready to just smack you. Yeah. If in doubt. Because how's it been for you in terms of being a valet? Obviously, there's a lot of technical stuff there, I imagine, in terms of the way that you uh, you, you carry things out as well, like if you're serving things or that it kind of stuff. It shows how much you keep up the show, Ross. I'm an under-butler now. I've been promoted, obviously. Um, I didn't know the difference. This series. Um, I have been watching this series because I loved it when you uh, when you got that nanny uh, kicked out. I liked it. I oh, I've, not, I've not seen any of it this year. But um, the the um, Alistair Bruce is basically on hand. He is, uh, is uh, he's connected with royalty. Um, he's Sky's royal and political correspondent, so he knows oh, right, what he's right. talking about. And he's also got that uh, academic side where he's done history and stuff like that. So he basically gives you a blueprint of what you're going to do in the scene. If you step out, deviate from that, he'll come in between a tape to just to give you a little note. And it's not, you know, it's in a, it's a, it's a collaborative thing. He'll work with the director, and and sometimes you can't remain true to the to to you know. Um, to the to the complete behaviour of the time because in a lot of houses when for example the upstairs for the aristocracy were walking down a hallway the servants had to turn and face the wall so oh it'd be quite hard doing scenes um, if you if we all had to turn and face the wall every time um, someone from upstairs Hugh Bonneville walked past us um, so there is a compromise and, and 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 you know you have to trade in certain things and that's a collaboration through Alistair Bruce looking at it from the the uh, authentic viewpoint, and then the director who's like, yeah, I want to keep it as authentic as possible, but at the same time, we've got to be real and make a TV show here. Exactly. No, that's, that's interesting, because, yeah, I mean, the whole thing like, of Less Is More, I think, I was watching uh, some scenes with Hugh Bonneville going mental as his character, um, and yet was still so controlled. It's almost like everything was in the face. There was just very little, and it's like, you almost go, he's doing nothing, but it's it's still really watchable. It's like, what, hardly anything's going on. Yeah. No, totally. I, I think if you can express it all as much as you can through your eyes uh, uh, and not through raising your voice. I mean, it's I've done it a million times. You know, um, bad acting where you start shouting and you get louder and louder as the scene progresses um, to try and convey a certain emotion. It's not yeah. truthful at all. Um, so that's a you know bad habit you've got to watch out for and try not to fall into them. Unfortunately, okay. I do quite a lot. Hey, well, you know, we're all we're all learning. Got a question here. Stella Lou um, looks like Stella is. I think this might have been a, a tweet before. She might be over in uh, China. It says our Chinese fans. Um, it's not really related to acting necessarily. This, but it does tie in with your charity thing. So I'm going to say it anyway because um, Stella would say, "Why doesn't Rob have a Twitter account?" Well, Rob doesn't have a Twitter account, Stella. But Rob's alter ego, the evil butler, does have a Twitter account. Um, are you have you started using that yet, Rob? I, I've not because you've got to send me the the details. So basically, everyone, Ross has designed my evil butler website very kindly and said I need to get the evil butler on Twitter. So he needs to send me the login details and tell me how to use Twitter. Well, you um, to Stella, I just I stay clear of all that kind of stuff because I just think it's it's the road it's it's the, it's the road to perdition, isn't it? The road to uh, perdition. And and I also genuinely think who who cares you know what I've had for breakfast or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? I I just um, I'm quite a private person, and I don't think anyone would be particularly interested to what I'm doing uh, on any given day. So that's why I sort of stay clear. It's not for me. I get that it's great for a means of communication for other people, and and that's fantastic. But for me, I'm a luddite. He's a luddite. No, he definitely is. And also, Rob, you owe me forty quid for that website as well. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Maybe. <laughs> we'll sort that out. I'll send you the login details once I send yeah. that. Uh, so, guys, yeah, um, if, you, if you want to tweet Rob, uh, you can actually tweet at, um, at the Evil Butler. Um, that's Rob's official account. It's not got a blue tick next to it because I think you've got 43 followers so far, Rob. But I imagine when it gets up into a few thousand, you have to you have to um, when I officiate it. Something. I've already got 43 followers. Yeah, you've got 43. And I've not tweeted yet. 
from it. You tweeted one which says, site is live, visit evilbutler.com to get involved with my 2014 London Marathon run for Children's oh, so MS. you must have tweeted that for me. I did that for you, yeah. Okay. Um, I love the way, the, the fact that I have to pay you the £40 before you give me the login details, so technically you're holding charity to ransom. You're, just, hold, you're holding a charity to ransom. People can't donate, I can't get people encouraged to donate until I give you your £40. I just want the members of your website to know no. what, what, what a vagabond uh, they're dealing with. That was a joke that just backfired. Um, no, it's all about charity. I'll send you the login details. And um, so yeah, so you can tweet at the evil butler. Um, but that reminds me. Okay, guys, we're um, we're kind of halfway through the broadcast now. Um, to win the Casting Networks UK 120 pound premium unlimited media profile, um, you need to get yourself over to um, to enter the raffle. At just basically donate one pound at Rob's Just Giving page. Um, you can do that by clicking on the link that's underneath this video. Just look directly underneath this video on the live page on Acts on This. Click on the Just Giving link, and if you donate a pound, um, we'll put you in a draw. Um, we're going to draw one at random. To win that, um, leave a message as well if you like. Yeah, leave a message. Let us know. Uh, let us know what you're doing. Definitely. Well, Ross, Ross, what if no one donates? Um, do we Sid's, just... o- Sid's already donated. Here you go. All right, Rob. so Sid's. If no one else donates, Sid's got it. You're in with a chance here, Sid. So here you go, Rob. Good it's lad. not much, but I want to help anyway. I can five quid. Oh, good lad, Sid. Thank you very much. Good on you, Sid. Someone else is in the middle of donating because it's an anonymous thing as well. So in your message, guys, when you're donating, just leave a message to say like you're an actor or so that we know it is you and I'm not going to oh, give yeah, it away so to we, someone. Yeah, they need to leave the name, otherwise we can't draw it out of the hat. <laughs> exactly. Leave a name um, and tweet us as well. Tweet at Act on this TV to let us know it was you and um, and we'll send you a direct message to get in touch so I can actually give you the uh, give you the uh, the prize. Um so yes, yeah, so I think we'll uh, we'll come away from Twitter for a minute. We'll let them uh, tweet us some more acting questions, um, and I'll go back to the email questions now. So we're going to start on Downton. Obviously, this is the the bulk of your career. You've four seasons in. You've just told us at the beginning of this that there's potentially get well. There's pretty much a fifth. That's what you just said. Um, so that's going to keep going. Um, let's have a look hopefully, at some of the. Hopefully, they want me in it. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Well, I'm going to ask you this because someone's asked this a minute ago. Okay, so. Um, the first question it says this is nice. Well, it says, when you think back to filming series one, did you or any of the cast ever expect to be filming series four a few years down the line? How was it initially kind of pitched to you? What what were they saying Downton was going to be straight away at the audition? Did you have any idea? I knew it was a, a bit a huge thing because um, um, Julian Fellows had, had written it and he'd won the um, Oscar for Gosford Park. We knew that um, Dame Maggie Smith was rumoured to be attached so she's a two-time Oscar winner and it had this sort of Hugh Bonneville was attached by that point and um, um, just because of them names you knew it had a chance now I think early on the idea Julian had wrote a synopsis for three series um, you know one sort of documenting this this aristocracy you know this sort of aristocracy this lifestyle that that doesn't exist in that this that form anymore yeah. And the second one would it would show the the impact of the Great War, World War One, on that kind of lifestyle, and how when people came back, so many were slaughtered on the battle battlefields. They wanted more than life of servitude when they came back. And the third one, sort of dealing with the aftermath of the war and how people wanted, you know, they wanted a chance for a better life to better themselves. That was sort of there. So there was there was a synopsis for three. And then because it just went so well, not just in this country, but globally, which no one, I don't think anyone envisaged, um, it kind of just, the audience obviously wanted more, so Julian wanted to write more, they kept the bulk of the cast, Dame Maggie still here, and which is unbelievable, a screen yeah. icon on our, you know, on our humble little TV channel, acting amongst us is, is great, so um, it, it, it it was earmarked for three, um, but I just think the success worldwide, they, and everyone enjoyed doing it so much that we've 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 done four, and hopefully we'll do five. Carrot might end up doing ten. I want to be in it by then, though. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Nice one. Um, anyway, so. if, anyone, if anyone wants to tweet in what kind of character they would think Ross would play on Downton Abbey, feel free. <laughs> be a good one. Watch what you're keep doing with your yeah, legs and that laptop. You keep flipping it up or something. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm so you, around. You keep jumping in and out of shot, man. Sorry, not... less is more, Rob. Stay still. Exactly. You, you weren't thinking about the shot then, were you, and hitting your mark? <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not learned anything, guys. He's learned nothing in four years of Downton. Um, no, that's interesting. Um, the audition for Downton, um, 
we mentioned audition preparation earlier with Corey and, and obviously all the you know all the, the 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 good practices you know that you should do for every audition. Um, how was the audition for Downton initially? It was Kate Rhodes James, was it? <laughs> no, it was Jill Trevelick. Jill Trevelick. Why did I say <laughs> Kate Rhodes James? Yeah, Jill oh, Trevelick. Oh. Both great casting directors. Um, uh, it was Jill Trevelick, and there was uh, the first time uh, director who, who started the series off, Brian Percival, who won a BAFTA and an Emmy for the first series of Downton. Yeah. And our, our, our then producer, now exec producer, Liz Trubridge. And it, I only had one audition for Downton. I was expecting, if I got through, it to be just a real grind. You know, because it was a lot of people wanted the part because he was the bad guy, and, and it, you know, you had that. The fact that he was gay in Edwardian times was really interesting angle for the character as well. Um, so I knew there'd be a lot of people up for it, um, and I expected to go a lot more than one audition. But um, Brian Percival was it was it was in the audition, and he was fantastic. I tried to do something stupid, something grandiose. He told me to pull it back and just say the words. It was Julian Fellows. All you got to do is say the words. The, you know the guy writes so succinctly that you don't need to try and put anything into it. And he just you know, he, he sort of was like a mentor, and he mentored me through the audition, and I ended up getting the part on one audition. And I asked Brian, I said, well, "What? You know, thank you for your help." And he and I said, "But, but why? We? Why? He was very positive, and one of the people in my camp saying that I should get the part of Thomas. And he just said, "I knew you could do it because he'd he'd give me a few notes, and I responded to the notes. I.e., I took direction." Which is a massive thing for directors um, to see if, a, if an actor they might do a scene brilliantly and you've got it in the can. If they if they give you a note, they're not necessarily having a go at you and questioning what you've just done, but they they think well you've done it great that way. Let's see if we can get a few a few different ways and see if we can get a bit of a mix going. Yeah. So because I was able to respond to his his direction in his notes, and again you can only respond if the director is giving you really good truthful notes, which is a skill in itself and something that. BP Brian Percival's got in spades. Um, you know, um, you can respond to that, and, and directors love people who can take direction. It sounds obvious, but not a lot of people can or won't or or think. No, I'm going to do it this way, and they remain stuck and rooted in in that way, and they won't change. It's about compromise. You know, there's times when I worked with Brian, and I didn't necessarily agree with what he said, and I would try and fight my con, and 99% of the time we'd find out he was right. But, you know, there'd be 1% of the time where I was right and he was man enough to step back and say, you know what, on that particular occasion, Rob, that one time out of a 1,000, you were right. So it's a it's a collaboration. You're both not working against each other but with, with each other to, you know, to make these words come to life um, on, the, on screen. Yeah, no, definitely. And I also think, I mean, I think you're absolutely bang on in terms of audition if you get... Um, if you if you're asked by the director to you know to given given a, an acting note or you know given some direction, it's it's only a good thing. A lot of people go, oh, I went in, I did it once, and they went, oh no, but why don't you do it like this? It's not because you've got it wrong first time. A lot of the time they'll go, all right, that was really good. It might have even been right. I'm going to tell you to do it differently just to see if you can take direction. Yeah, and uh, early on in my career, I was guilty of. I used to always take it personally. I think, why does he keep asking me? Even when I, I'd got a job and I was filming. And they were, you know, trying doing it this way. I, I would take it personally, thinking, "Oh, oh no, um, what I'm doing is not good enough." It's only through work uh, and stuff like that, and, and seeing it happen with other actors who are fantastic, that it's nothing. Nine times out of ten, it's nothing to do with your performance. It's because, you know, a lot of times it can be flattering because they know you're you've got that flexibility as an actor, and that you can do it a different way. So the fact that they're asking you is because they know you can. And, yep. and why not? If you've got time, let's try it different ways. You don't know what might come out of it. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes out of it, out of a you know a, a specific note, something magical can happen. Yeah. Or yeah. not, but you never know unless you try. Got to try. Got to try. Well, um, ties in nicely. We got a question here from somebody called Kate on email. Kate, hello. We've not got your surname, but hope you're watching. Um, she goes back to uh, your Jonathan Ross interview the other night, and I know we've covered this in the podcast, and you know what it's going to be. It's going to be the kiss that you said you put in that wasn't initially there. Um, you mentioned that um, it was a, that, that was like another collaboration, you know, and that's what I think is great about Downton. If you can even go, you know, work with the director and go, actually, I'm going to put this in that wasn't even in the script. It wasn't a stage director or anything like that. It was you decided to put the kiss in with Charlie Cox um, yeah. in that scene. Um, the uh, case asked if that is something that kind of um, has happened again with other characters or things. Is 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 are you allowed to kind of 
toy with Julian Fellow's words or you know story and that kind of thing? Is that something that's well, just completely rare? Oh, totally. Um, the thing is, I didn't tie with his words, but I, you could argue that I tied with the story. But yeah. again, because we had rehearsal time, we had time to you know pitch this idea. Brian, the director, loved it. Um, I, I wanted it because it, you know, Thomas was betrayed, and I just said it is, you know, the fact that he's betrayed if it had come after a kiss that he'd initiated would make it so much more painful for him and Way have worse. so much yeah. more impact. Um, and initially, I think it was the Duke stroking Thomas's face, and I just thought it'd be it'd be more powerful if Thomas initiated a kiss and then he was betrayed by the Duke. Um, but again, that's come out of collaboration. The director thought it was great. It was taken upstairs and it was pitched upstairs. And Julian and, and the execs loved the idea of it. And it really was a, a, a bombshell moment because no one was looking for it. But you can ho only have them moments if the writing's good enough. Like Julian writes a scene so well that you could play it a myriad of different ways. And you can't just crowbar a kiss in unless the scene's really well written. Yeah. He left that scene, I think, ambiguous deliberately to see if the actors would take it as far as far as they wanted to or not do you know what I mean they could go for it more or keep it hold, held back he left it ambiguous like that I think deliberately and quite cleverly to see what we would do and let us make it up on the day but as his words you don't he's an Oscar winner you know what I mean <laughs> he's writing huge he's, 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 he's in demand all over the world all, all over the world you don't you don't touch um, the play's the thing. You don't touch his words. Yeah, you know. but you can uh, suggest. You can change the odd one, if you, uh, but you have to discuss <laughs> it. You have to discuss it. You can't on a win because I just think it's disrespectful, isn't it? Because the, we know that the thing is only successful if the writing's there. Yeah. You can't make a bad script good. It doesn't matter if you've got Spielberg on it. It doesn't matter if you've got you know Daniel Day-Lewis. If it's a bad script, it's a bad script. There's nothing you can do about it. You need... The, the infrastructure and the keystone is the script, is the words, and it's Julian Fellows, so you, you gen, generally just don't touch them. Just don't touch them. Can I show you something that uh, came about that I laughed my head off at before? Um, just because of what you said on Jonathan Ross. It's amazing what the papers do with, with things and just do titles. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> it's easier kissing men than women, as if that's what you do in your, in your normal life all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm here, Ross. Behave yourself to talk about acting, not to comment on tabloids. I know. I just thought it was funny. That Let's was not it. waste everyone's time about whatever I've said. I know. Just... Ross. Let's talk about acting. Let's talk about acting. Let's keep it clean. Let's keep it clean. I'm just buying myself some time, really. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to do another little shout. I don't forget to keep donating, guys. To uh, get to evilbutler.com, and you can donate through there, or click on the link below this video. Get to just giving. Donate to Rob's uh, London 2014 London Marathon run. Um, and if you're an actor, we're going to draw a contributor at random to win £120 subscription to Casting Networks UK. So keep that up. Sid, well done. I've not checked if anyone else has done it yet, but we Sid has at least yeah, done it. So like uh, Sid's just going to win it flat out. Cause well, Sid, like, Sid could win it, potentially. I'm just going to double check now. You've made me do this. Oh, no, wait a sec. Tim Paley, best of luck with a good cause. He's in. And also an anonymous donation. He mustn't have filled their name and stuff in yet, or even the amount. So I don't know who you are. Um, so log back into your Just Giving donation and, and leave a note if it is indeed an actor who you would like to be considered for the prize. So currently it's a 50-50 chance between Tim and Sid. Uh, everybody else, get your hands in your pockets. Um, right, more questions, Rob. Um, be just the fact that it's only Tim and Sid listening. <laughs> no, currently um, we no, got. I don't, I'm I don't want to say numbers. It's over a hundred though, so at least that's good. We we broke the century, uh, which is nice. Can I get my uh, get more questions out here? I've just got stacks and stacks and stacks. Um, oh, we talked about that. That was that was a question about the historical stuff. How you keep the historical stuff accurate? But we mentioned Alistair Bruce, um, who is a uh, who is a legend. Um, you can do a certain amount of research, but when you've got a historical advi advisor, you know who's who, who's been educated uh, and spent his life researching these things, and is a historian, yeah. you know, you're not going to find out anything that he can't. So you, you, it's it's a luxury to have him. So we just use him to the full. He's like a real life Wikipedia. You won't know what that is because you're a luddite. But that's like you must know what that is, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to Wikipedia, I live in. I, I'm from Stoke on Trent at one point and live <laughs> in Stockport or something. But I'm, but I'm not. But yeah. 
My God. Tina Harris, big shout out to you. Thanks for. Uh, Tina always gets involved with these things. It's really good. Um, she re really enjoying it so far. Great point about taking direction, Rob. So important. She loves these webinars. The webinars so refreshing to hear that even actors working in the most coveted jobs have the same feelings. So that's yeah. nice. We all have the same sort of fears and the same paranoias and, and, and you know, the same emotions. Otherwise, we wouldn't be driven to acting in the first place. Yeah, no, definitely. And I Since... think that, that doesn't matter. We go right up to film actors who all have the same neuroses and, and, and paranoias and am I good enough? Because that's what drives us to, to get better. Definitely. What's it like between takes it down and do you all go, oh, God, was I any good? Oh, God, was that all right? Ugh. Or, you know, you're just going, oh, that was great, mate. Brilliant. No, we can't. We can't. No, it's none of that. We just, you just do it. And if if you're not happy, you ask for another take. Um, you know, there's none of this back slapping and going, we're great and stuff. But uh, now we're in series four. Everyone's so well into their characters, and and it's a wet. The the same crew are coming back. It's a well-oiled machine. So yeah. we can't hit the ground running. Um, and everyone knows, and if, and I think everyone improves year on year, and the characters get more finessed. Um. So yeah, we, it's once you've been in. That's the great thing about Downton as well is the chance to, you know, rather than a lot of the stuff that I've done, it'd be a guest episode here and there, and you you don't have much chance to make your mark. This is a, Thomas is a work in progress, so you can nuance him over the series and get to really develop him. And thankfully, Julian writes great vignettes and storylines for him, so you see him, you know, go on his ups and downs journeys through life, which we all do. Um, yeah. so to, to have ownership of that over four series is is, is is a privilege and fantastic. fantastic. It's brilliant. It's brilliant that you're coming right. through such a time frame as well. Normally, like even for in four series, you might only get like a four year kind of times time frame over that. Uh, or if it's yeah. something like 24, you get like a 24 hour period over 24 episodes or whatever. Downton, it's gone over. You know, kind of loads of you. You know, you've gone. You've been in the war. Um, you know, you've you've seen. I suppose it's a bit of a history lesson, isn't it? Yeah, you've, these, the fact that the, the war, the impact that had on the psychology of the nation. You know, the, the fact that the class system was starting to be brought down from within, you know, the first splinters uh, were seen in the class system and people were questioning it. We get to play all that out with the character as they go through life, all mm. these changes, because it was a period of time where there was a lot of rapid changes, huge changes for society that, were, you know, that had massive ramifications into the future. Yeah, it's, uh, no, that's what that's what I really like about it. Um, Sid says, um, very reassuring, we're all in the same boat, inspiring stuff, good on Sid. Tim said, great interview, Rob James Collier, great advice from an astute and principled actor. I think he's talking about me, not you. <laughs> Maybe I said, it sounds like I've sent that one in. Well, no, I think you have, I think you have. Um, let's have a look. BR Steve, um, I just made it for the end, cheers from Berlin. Fans in Germany, Rob. Oh, hello. Um, so is it a bit stupid, though, that the only gay person is the evil guy? How do you feel about that? Um, no, I just think it's serendipity. You know, gay people could be evil, straight people could be evil. It's that simple. But I don't think he's evil. I just think he's a product of, of his time. And the fact mm. that he is, is a homosexual, but in, it's in a time when it's uh, illegal. He'd be put in prison. He'd be ruined his sort of reputation and wouldn't work again. And it was also against God. So I think that sort of burden, that secret that he has to carry and he can't share with anyone, manifests itself in his, his ill manners towards his fellow man. And I don't, you know, I think it, that's how I uh, understand and empathise with Thomas. Because imagine not being able to love or to be told that the way you feel about someone is against your God and that you will burn in hell for it. You can't, it's not the nicest sort of feeling. You know what I mean? Great, so, great existence. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. It's an uh, interesting character, though. It's good. Um, Sarah Eve says, have you only ever uh, been seen or cast as northern characters for theatre or film? Or, um, how, yeah, how is the accents and stuff with you? Do you, something you bother with? Or, you know, do you, do you just stick to, you know, to kind of like stuff close at home? It was it was something that I don't have. I would say that I'm not naturally gifted at. I have done, you know, um, I've done uh, a f the film, uh, a film where I've had an American accent and stuff like that. And it's something that I I, I work on. But like anything, it's something I need to work on more. You know, um, um, but it's, it's I'm not gifted. But I I would say to all actors, it just improves your chances to know RP um, um, American. Because you, you, it's just obvious, isn't it? You can get put in for a wider variety of roles, so why not? Um, just keep working at it. Um, 
it doesn't come easy to me. I'll be honest, I hate doing it, but I've realised now that I have to do it if I want to even broaden my horizons uh, and, and, and take my career in different directions. You can only do that if you step outside of your comfort zone and your own accent. Um, but okay. sometimes it can be hard to get the auditions for the parts as well because you're kind. Of, I'm kind of known as a northern actor. Just seen and, as that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but p particularly because Downton's um, so worldwide, and particularly in America, it would make sense to learn uh, to an American accent. You know, just general American, yeah, definitely. Do you yeah. think your your accents changed through the seasons of Downton? Did initially did you go into it and think, oh God, it's a period drama. I have to try and be a bit more well spoken, a bit more RP even though you're downstairs in the house and you know people are No, but that's funny enough what I tried to do in my audition but the, the, the servants never spoke RP so yeah. it was a stupid idea and Brian Percival very quickly and very kindly corrected me uh, on that. Um, what I tried to have with Thomas was what I called a telephone voice. You know when you hear someone pick up the, the telephone and they put on a, um, a, a, a sort of a, a more finessed version of their own voice. Yeah. So he was upstairs and he was on show as it were in front of the family and, and he's, he's He's quite vain, Thomas, and he always wants to impress because he's trying to move up the ladder. Um, I would put on the telephone voice, so he's a lot more rounded, you know, whereas downstairs he lowers his guard because he's amongst his own sort of peer group and he doesn't have anyone that he he deems worthy of being impressed. So it, it goes a little a little more colloquial and a little, a little more, you know, how I speak downstairs, but upstairs I definitely finesse it. It's only a subtle difference, but few people have spotted it. Is there a, a, a kind of like a uh, an, an accent coach or a dialect coach for any of the any of the the, the cast at all on hand, or is well, it something when, that people have done themselves? When we start, started out, we had um, a great uh, a dialect coach. Penny Dyer was um, was um, on board. Um, uh, the show um, made sure she was around. So for the first few weeks while we were rehearsing, she was also um, going over. Um, our dialects, um, particularly with southern actors who were playing because it's set in Yorkshire, um, the show. Um, so helping them with Yorkshire accents, but also with with me sort of taking the modernisms out of my language. Yeah. Um, dropping T's and stuff like that. There's a lot of Americanisms in our language that she helped or tried to help take out. Sometimes to creep back in when you're sort of caught in the moment of the scene. But she was on hand during the first series. Yeah. So good yeah, stuff. Got to a good start. Yeah, no, definitely. So well, I mean, there's so much kind of like being cast, like you, you were saying recently with with actors. I mean, there's things like have you seen Peaky Blinders? You, uh, uh, no, I, I have it on tape, and I can't wait to watch it. Brilliant. I think it's silly and Murphy and that, and those all kind of like brummy accents. Um, but one thing that was kind of, was it interesting actually on, in the first series when they sent the casting briefs out, is it said they would expect people to do you know do a Birmingham accent, but they did say what well, I thought was quite interesting um, is that it's not essential that you tip top on it initially for the audition. They're saying particularly because um, how the Birmingham accent has changed over the years. So because it was set, you know, so far ago, you can kind of get away with it not being exactly as it is today. Um, yeah. Because you know, because it's kind of changed over the years, which I thought was interesting. But I don't know. It's going like that, isn't it? But I don't know if I could do Brumoy. The Just main thing I would say to people, if you have to go for an audition and and it's in a different accent and you're not confident, is don't get bogged down in it. Yeah. You think about the performance. Um, if the, if the accent, if they can see that you've tried and it's and it's it's getting there. They will always work on it if they want you. The the performance is is key though. If you get overly bogged down in in getting the action totally perfect and just turn into a robot during your audition, and there's no life in the sentences because you're but you're instead of thinking what the character is thinking, you're thinking how do how does this vowel sound go, and you know then you're not going to get anywhere with that as well. So particularly in auditions, if you're not comfortable in the action. Just free yourself up a bit. Don't dwell on it and don't get bogged down in it because at the end of the day, it's the performance that matters and they can work with you to yep. finesse that action, using accent tutors and stuff like that. Or it's something you can pay for yourself to do after if you get the part, you know? So Yeah, no, definitely. No, I mean, I, I read in for quite a lot of auditions as well, so I'll be the, the reader opposite the people auditioning. And, and I've seen quite a few auditions where people have, have uh, come in, particularly southern uh, people based in the south come up and they've got to do a northern accent or, you know, the other way around. Um, and they're a little bit self-conscious of it. Um, and so many times the director's gone, you know what, just do it in your own accent. And they, some people have got the part, they've changed it, they've gone, you know what, don't need that accent now, just do it as yourself. And also, on that Breaking Bad interview with the casting director of Breaking Bad, um, when Dexter, it might have been in Dexter actually, um, there was a character who was initially, um, it's in Miami or something, and there was a character who was going to be Hispanic or something, and then they actually changed the entire nationality of the character because this person came in and was just so brilliant. Um, you know, that, that can kind of happen. It's not necessarily set in stone at the audition stage that they've got to speak 
um, with that's the action good, as well. That's a, that's a very good point. Yeah, it'd be a brave thing to do, but you know, if you weren't comfortable in the action and you just went in and blitzed it in your own, it's it's, it's certainly worth trying, isn't it? Yeah. Rather, not, than, not, rather than not going and saying I can't do that action, I'm not going to go. Um, just go and do it in your own. Exactly. Just go and have a uh, go and have a bash. Uh, Carol, um, it's just come She goes. Uh, she's finally here, doing a great job. Loving the interview. Hello, Carol. Carol, it's nearly at the end, but don't worry because there's a recording of this, and it'll go up on the website tomorrow. Um, so you'll be able to watch the whole thing. Has um, Carol got a question? Has anyone got any? Qu Everyone's saying I'm finally here. Great interview, but no one's asking us any questions. Ask some questions. Well, I've got a few on email here, Rob. The next, right. well, the next, the next ones are about kind of um, your future. Um, going, oh no, there's one more downson here. Going, you've worked with some, oh, oh yeah, this is funny. Some, well, it's not funny at all, it's just a good question. Uh, you've worked with some awesome names on Downton. Yeah, you've danced with Maggie Smith, shared the screen with Shirley MacLaine. Who's been, who's been kind of like your favourite person to work with on the show? Or can you not say? Just, just be honest. Oh, I can. Like, obviously, for everyone, um, Dame, Dame Maggie's a massive highlight, and to watch her in action, in, in, in action, I mean. She genuinely is world class and an icon, so it's a privilege. You know, when I when I started doing acting classes after doing a business studies degree, I never for a second thought I'd be taking Maggie Smith out to waltz. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Visit that. That's the be beauty of this game. You can end up anywhere or with anyone doing anything. You know. How are you feeling in yourself doing that when you were, you know taking? Incredibly about nervous. <laughs> Did you step on her feet? I stood. I stood on her toe. Yeah. Oh God. She gave me a look, uh, you know, that said, I'll let you off on that one. Don't let it happen again. Really? Um, so, uh, what was the original question again? So he's been your, your favourite, because there's been loads of guest stars, and obviously... Uh, yeah, as well. but I, I've, I've got to say, um, my old partner in crime, Siobhan Finneran, who played Miss O'Brien, she's left the series now. I hope she comes back one day. She was a fantastic character. She's a fantastic uh, woman and a great actor. She's a really well-respected actor and uh, character actress, so she's done fantastic... You know, roles. She's no, she's completely different in Benadorm. She was in the great thing with Boye, but I think called Boye. She's um, she's a superb. She was in one of Jimmy McGovern's The Streets. Um, she was in Unforgiven, which was BAFTA nominated. Brilliant, fantastic actress. And again, that stillness I was talking about. Um, all in the eyes, economy of movement. You know, and just could flick it on like turning on a switch. She'd be laughing and joking in the middle of a take, and then turn on the old Brian eyes. And I'd gone in as Thomas with these grandiose ideas of playing him really big and, you know, trying to go Hollywood with it or what, these grandiose ideas of playing this, you know, over-the-top villain. Yeah. And she, I just, after doing rehearsals with her and watching how nuanced she, nuanced she was and she wasn't cliched and she was nice as O'Brien. And the thing is, the nicer you are as a bad person makes them more scary, you know what I mean? The lines speak for themselves and she used to deliver them. Mm. With almost a smile in her eyes, which made it more sort of threatening. And I thought, yeah. clever, that's the way to do it. So I essentially tried to copy everything Shib did. I yeah. put it into Thomas. There's nothing wrong with that. I heard, um, oh, I don't know who it was say, but it, was, it might have been like one of one of the, one of the greats, like the nearest someone saying, uh, if you see something that somebody's done that's really good, steal it because chances are they've stolen it from someone else anyway. Yeah, it's a good way of looking at it, you know, and everyone has the, the heroes and people you learn from, learn from, and every job, you know, should not be just, we I've got the job, it should be, it's a chance for you to go, right, I'm with a bunch of top class actors, which I am, I yeah, can yeah. learn here, I'd be a fool not to open myself up to it and watch and observe people, even when, I, you know, I'm waiting to come on and do a scene, and I'm not in a scene, I'll watch the monitor and I'll watch people in action, in action people like Brendan Coyle who plays Bates, superb actor and again you can learn so much and soaking it all up in it's a, it's a genuine privilege and experience to get paid and to be able to sort of make yourself better as an actor which I've become better every year um, you know it's like being in a master class in it every day I yeah suppose. yeah which is uh, which is amazing. A few more questions have come through on Twitter. Tina says, "Were you still proactive even when you landed a great agent? Do you even now keep in touch with casting directors and directors on your own, or do you leave that uh, to other people?" Well, right up until Downton, um, I wrote to the casting. I wrote to Jill Trevelyan about Downton in the same way that I wrote to the casting director um, for, Ca uh, for Coronation Street. I always wrote to them. I always sent my showreel and my CV in and my picture and. Whether or not um, whether or not they read it, 
I don't know, but I know for the Coronation Street, I saw the DVD showreel that I'd sent in myself on top of the pile. When my then agent told me not to bother, that was their job. I kind yep. of ignored them. And I, the proof of the pudding was that it was on the top of the CV pile. So she had opened it and looked at it. And maybe it was that was the reason I was there in the audition. Again, with Jill Trevelick, I, I sent out a letter. And I don't know if she ever got it and whether that's just my agent's got the part. But what the way I looked at it is it, it's not going to hurt anyone. You yep. know, the worst they can do is not open it and put it in the bin. But at least you've tried. There might be that one chance in a thousand that someone actually looks at it, your photo spills out. There's a role that they're casting for at the time. You think, wow, they've got the right face. Um, yep. So it's, I never rested on my laurels and, and still won't. Well, that exact thing happened to you with Casualty, didn't it? You didn't have an agent at the time, I don't think, and that someone picked you just because of your headshot in, in Spotlight. Um, oh, I was on Spotlight, but I'd, again, it was one of these I'd sent out to a load of people, I'd, as I call it, carpet bombing the industry, right. getting, getting a copy of Contacts, which we should all know about. You can get it on Amazon. Well, let me show you, right, before you go any further, Rob, let, look at this. Let me just share my screen and just show people what you can do on Acts on This while we're on this because... Oh, well, yeah, I didn't have Acts on This then. Do you know what exactly. I mean? You, we, exactly. I knew you, you hadn't created this magnificent beast. Precisely. Well, check this beast out now, everybody. Um, in the top uh, menu bar on Acts on This, you can see next to the live thing that's flashing now, you have something called listings. If you go into listings, something that Rob didn't have, um, he just had a copy of Contacts. Contacts is a great book, but Contacts just lists a load of names and addresses and, and, and nothing else. So, you know, it's, if you're new to the industry and you don't know who casts what, you know, it's not pointless, but it's just really hard to find out exactly what's going on. With Acts on This, what you can do is you can search via um, genre, so you can go agents, casting directors, uh, photographers or acting schools. Um, let this just catch up. I don't know if you guys are, uh, are seeing this or not. Are you seeing the drop down, Rob? I can see it. Yeah, well, I didn't see the drop down. I can see. I can see the page. Because um, I'm going to look now. Because there you go. Right. Okay. So if I click on this, and you get a drop down. Come on. Come on, Google. Oh, don't do dear. this. Technology live on air. Technology live. Don't let me down. It's basically following my mouse, but it's not showing drop down. So you can see these guys. You can see genre. You can see shows and locations. Under the genre tab there, you can search for just agents. You can search for casting directors, acting schools, or photographers. And you can then go, okay, you can combine them. So I could go agents from the genre category and then combine that with locations uh, like England North, England South, you know, Scotland Island, Wales, you know, to find agents in your area. The shows drop down. I wish I, I wish it would it would show you on here, but the shows drop down. There's like 500 of the biggest shows over the last sort of five years that are on there. So if you want to search for a particular show, you might go. I'm going to be. I think I can see myself in Casualty or Downton Abbey. Um, you can then just select the show, click on search. Um, I'll show you what it'll do. You won't be able to see me select this, but if I click on Downton Abbey and then click search. It's going to take me through to a page where Dan Hubbard did cast three episodes, I think, of, uh, of Series 3, so that's why he's there. But Jill Trevelick there is the main casting director uh, for Downton. Um, it gives you uh, Jill's address, also gives you Jill's phone number and Jill's email address as well, and it gives you an interactive map. So if you ever had to go and see her for an audition, you can visit the place before you actually go so you know where you're going. Because I used to hate tipping up to auditions, not knowing where I was, you know, where I was going to go, and then you get all nervous, am I going to be there on time? also shows you what else they've cast as well. Um, so under there, uh, we can see that uh, you know Jill recently cast uh, Case Sensitive Merlin. Well, that's Merlin. a good point. Is know your casting directors. You know these people are, uh, are very they're the, the gatekeepers to your to your potential future work, aren't they? Absolutely. So they're not there by fluke. They're really talented and good at what they do. So show them a bit of respect by researching not only just what they've cast. Try and watch if you get time. Obviously, put most of your effort into your audition. But if you're winding down, watch some of one of the shows they've cast before. It gives you something to talk about in the audition. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so yeah, so you can you can check that on Acts on This guys. There's also a button there that says email my CV. Uh, you can create your CV on Acts on This as well, um, really really simply. And then you can email it directly from the site um, via this. So you'll see um, that was uh, Dan's um, email address there. So Dan's email address already filled in. Fill in your subjects and your message. Uh, click send CV and it'll send your CV as a PDF attachment. Um, automatically. So I used to hate you, Rob. Did you ever used to send emails? Well, oh, you're a luddite, so you probably didn't. And you say, um, please uh, find attached, you know, my CV. And then you send it and go, oh my god, I didn't attach my CV. Um, you can't do that on Acts on this. It automatically attaches it, so you can't forget. Oh, that's, um, that's clever. So that's pretty good. And also, every CV, if we go to my CV on the site, picture of you there, Rob, advertising tonight. Um, I'll show you what the CVs look like as a PDF. Um, 
So if I go onto the CV tab there, you have these things called QR codes. You'll love that, Rob, but you need to look at these as well. QR codes are pretty cool, people. Um, say, for instance, you printed this CV off from the site because you can just download it and print it. Um, it comes with something called QR code already built into the CV that you print off. Um, and then if a casting director has that and say they're not by the computer, they can actually scan that code with their iPhone or their iPad or their Android device. Um, and that will take them to your CV and show reel um, that instantly on the site. So whereas like on Spotlight, you have to remember like a... 12-digit view pin or something like that to view your acting CV. Um, with that's on this, if you create a CV there, you get this QR code, and all they have to do is scan it, so they can't really go wrong there. You know, it's as, uh, it's as simple as that. And your CV is um, really simply kind of set out. You just put your credits in, um, and if I share this screen with you, I'll show you what it looks like as the PDF version. Hopefully, if I can get this to, uh, to share. Come on. Technology, eh? Because we're live. Just going to share the. Uh, <laughs> going to share this PDF with you. So there you go. So that's what your CV looks like. So you've not actually had to put in any work. All you have to do on the site is put your credits in. You don't have to lay anything out. Your headshots there, QR codes there, or your credits are there, um, and your uh, your skills, your training, all that kind of thing. Um, but that's what is sent. If you email your CV out from the site, that's what is sent to the casting director or the agent. Um, it's automatically done. You don't have to bother with a word document or you know try and set it up yourself or anything like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. I didn't have that when you were around, Rob, but got it now. Yeah, I had to uh, graft and do it all myself through contacts and stuff. But exactly. like I say, the main gist is every little helps. And it's if it if it's not going to hurt anyone, why wouldn't you do it and give it a try? Yep, give it a go. And as you can never be afraid to ask. Just email the customer and ask for something. What can they say? No, as long as you're not a pest and you're not yeah. you know stalking them. Yeah, um, and at least you're at least trying to shape your own destiny. At least it feels like in them down periods you're actually doing something rather than staying at home and waiting for the phone to ring. You're being proactive and, and trying to make that phone ring. Yeah, definitely. Um, guys, I'm going to give a 10-minute call in now. I'm going to wrap it up in 10 minutes. For those who want to enter the Casting Networks competition, um, all you need to do to win potentially win a £120 Casting Networks subscription to their premium service, Casting Networks is an awesome casting resource. Some of the biggest casting networks in the country are using it to cast some of the biggest stuff around. Um, you can uh, enter to win. Um, by donating one pound to Rob's um, London Marathon run uh, for Chilton's MS Centre. All you have to do is just click on the link um, below, which is below this video, next to the Casting Networks logo. Um, it'll tell you a bit about why we're doing the raffle and how it works. Um, get over to Rob's Just Giving page, donate a pound or more, um, and we're going to draw an answer, uh, not an answer, we're going to draw a, uh, a donator. Name. <laughs> yeah, a name at random. Um, to win a, a subscription to Casting Networks, which is such an amazing resource, honestly. If you've not checked it out either, guys, it's free to sign up for a basic profile. Go over to castingnetworks.co.uk and do it because it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. It really will be a big, a big thing in the industry. A um, couple more questions then. So that's a 10-minute warning. So at 20.52, Rob, you've done an hour, and, an hour and 20 minutes. That's what it will have been. So oh, I've got to go to bed soon, you know what I mean? I'm getting I, know. I know. You said you do an hour, but I'm making him go an extra 20. A few more questions then. Um, Sid said, how do you, okay, so we kind of cover that, how do you approach a casting director and what's the right thing to say? It always boggles him, he says. What were the things that you were writing when you were approaching Jenny Radcliffe at Corrie and Jill at Downton? The, the thing is, you don't want to write a massive cover. Like, I, the, the truth is, when I spoke to most casting directors, they're looking at the picture first. So get a real, uh, get, a, get a quality photographer, I think these, it, it'll tell you in contacts or on your website who yep. the photographers are, and it's worth investing in your picture because your picture is your it's the first thing they look at is the picture. They're not going to look at text or even your CV. They're going to look at your face and see what does that fit for the roles that I'm casting for. So make sure you've got a good um, photograph. And then the covering letter is just a brief, just a brief synopsis of you why you're contacting them. Just tell them, you know, the truth. Don't come across as desperate or <laughs> you know what I mean, anything like. That. Just keep it short, sweet. Tell the truth. Um, what you've been up to. Very brief. Uh, the, the photo, as I say, is key. If you've got a showreel, make sure it's on Spotlight, or if you've got your own website as well, make sure the link to that's in it, or send them a hard copy as well. Um, just make sure it's all in there for them to have it, to give them no excuse not to not to see your showreel. So they can go and see it online. They've got a hard copy of DVD on the desk that they can stick in the computer. Uh, but it, if you have one, they need to see it, and it definitely needs to be up on Spotlight as well. Yeah, definitely. Headshot is so important as well, particularly commercial castings. When I've worked um, as a casting assistant on commercial castings, um, because there's so many um, submissions, you know, you might be looking for like you know five people for an advert, and you might get you know 300 submissions through. The initial call 
or who they're even going to call into the room to audition. It's done completely off headshots. Um, what, what often happens is they'll get a contact sheet of just you know maybe 20 little miniature headshots on each sheet, go through the marker, literally crossing and ticking people's faces. So if your headshot isn't very good, you know, regardless if you've done the best work, you've got the best CV, it's not even going to be looked at. So yeah, absolutely, headshots are, uh, are really important. Yeah. Um, definitely. Good. Another couple of questions um, before we do the draw for winning the uh, the subscription. Hopefully, it'll be more than just uh, Tim and Sid in the running, but we'll uh, we'll see. It's exciting. Um, Sharon said, "How did you select your agent? Oh, how did you select your agent initially? Um, uh, how did that work out?" Well, that's uh, you know, uh, I would watch I would watch things that I liked, dramas that I liked, um, see in the credits who was, um, you know, who played the certain parts and certain roles that I thought I would be eligible for as well. Then put that into Spotlight, which would tell me which agency they were with. Then I would write to that agency and go, you represent this actor who, you know, is a hero of mine or who I love his work. You know, you're his agent. You can obviously get him access to that work. Would you consider me? That's, that's how I did it. Yeah. Like looking at actors who I admired, who I respected, who inspired me, seeing who they were with and then try and, contact their agents to see if they were interested and yeah. that way you'll find that if you do enough actors and, I, and God knows I did loads the, it'll build up a profile and the same agencies will start popping up um, you know um, the good ones will all start popping up because they've got groups of actors at these agencies again you've got contacts anyone who's all the listings and that's on this <clears throat> <laughs> or the listings on whatever you just said. I'm, I'm, here, on this. I'm here to talk about acting, not pitch your website. Um, <laughs> or, or you know, or if they're in contact or whatever, you know they're credible. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, and that's the way I did it. Was because otherwise you're just saying, oh, please take me on, and they're like, well, why, 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 why my agency? Why have you come to me? And if you haven't got an answer for that, it shows that you, you just there, there's no method. You know, there's no reason you've come to them and they're like, well, you don't know anything about my agency or who I, who our clients who we represent. So find out about the agency once you've found them. Look on the website, you know, dig it, dig around a bit and, and tell them why you've come to them as opposed to any other agents. Yeah, definitely. And also, um, because so many have websites with their clients listed on as well, you can often have a look through the list and see how many people they've got like you because maybe you don't want to apply to an agency who's got five of you. because you're not Oh, no, you don't. You know. Definitely don't because you, you want to apply to an agency who's got an actor that you admire yep. um, and, and is in the sh kind of shows and material you want to be doing. So, uh, you know, if he's in these gritty dramas and you want to be in them and you find out who you're with, that's, you with, you go to them. But you don't want to go to an agency that has two people who look like you because... There's a conflict of interest there, isn't there? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Right, five-minute klaxon going. We're going to talk about the last couple of email questions, Rob, which are all about I, your future. I didn't hear, I didn't hear a, a five-minute klaxon. I didn't hear a klaxon. Wait a minute. I'm just going to get one. don't know what I can do here. Uh, oh. Don't worry about it, Ross. It wasn't a big thing. Not really a klaxon, but you know, it's <laughs> impressive all the same. Right, you've got, into, you've got into cheese now, come on. Five, mi better. five minute warning, yeah? Um, right, okay, well that's good. Um, so Rob, your future, we had three, well, three or four emails here um, asking about what you would like to do, and whether you want to stick with that soon, you want to move into potentially directing, producing, doing any writing. Where do you see yourself? Obviously you've got Series 5, you reckon. Um, well, if it finished there, what would you reckon, do? I didn't reckon anything. I just no. said it'd be nice. If it, hopefully, they'll have me back. That is far from reckoning. <laughs> fingers like crossed. I said, never get complacent. No, fingers um, crossed for five. What would you do if What would you do if the, it finished at five? There might be an opportunity for me to do um, some directing, uh, directing um, a, a TV series, which I don't want to go into too much um, yep. because it's not finalised. But it was a show that I'd been on before. Um, um, it's it's not Coronation Street before you say anything like that, Ross. Um, but it's a it's a six part. It's sort of a six part, and it tells everyday stories. It's a bit like Play for the Day. And I was on I was in a couple of them, and um, they made they've asked if I would like to direct one, and um, I've I, I've jumped at the chance. So we're we're going to have meet up and have uh, discussions about it, and um, and I'll see if I can sort of make my di directorial debut, which is something I'm kind of always. I've never said that's my agenda. It just kind of they've made an offer, um, and and they said they think you'd you'd be okay. And I know I'd be good 
with the actors because I know what it feels like because I've been there, you know, and, and I know how to get the best out. And I know how I like to be treated as an actor and I need an arm put around me and, it, and stuff like that. The technical side, I will have nightmares about, but um, um, it's something that I'm going to jump into. Um, and so hopefully that'll come off. So definitely looking at, uh, at doing that, um, hopefully in the new year. And who knows where that'll take me. It might be the worst experience of my life. It could be the best experience of my life. Um, uh, it'll be quite interesting because... Um, there may be a role for you, Ross, if you uh, behave yourself. That would that would uh, be amazing. <sighs> Fingers got crossed. Off the, got off the guns on. Um, so there's that. Um, as for my um, acting, I just take everything one day at a time. I don't have any big plans. I got into this business by serendipity. I've said how I've sort of blagged my way in there. Um, so I don't set myself targets because you know you just put undue pressure on yourself. So I'll just keep working hard, and what will be will be. Absolutely, good, good answer. Cover, covered everything there. Absolutely. Um, and on that, on that note, I reckon I might do this. <laughs> I'm going to call it a day. I think we've maybe called it one minute too early there, but I don't care. I'm going to go over to Just Giving Rob, see who's actually donated to your charity tonight, and see who we can give this Casting Network's profile away how to. You, how are you going to pick it at random? I'm going to count how many people have donated. I'm going to go to a website called random.org. I'm going to type the number of people who have donated in, and I'm going to get it to um, select one of those numbers at random. We're going to see who it relates to. Um, it's all going to be done live, and you're going to see it so that no one can do that thing when X Factor got in trouble and got fined. It's all going to be absolutely genuine. How, <laughs> it's not how long, fixed. How long is that going to take? Oh, two minutes, if that. Oh, um, definitely. Awesome. So uh, let's have a look. Oh, there's been a few, Rob. There's been a few. Thank right. you very much. Uh, anyone who's donated, genuinely, thank you very much. It's a great cause, and I'm flattered that you've uh, that you would spend a pound or more on me. Thank you. More. It's been more. It's been more. Unfortunately, guys, I, I'd like to be kind of like biased and just give it to the highest bidder, but can't no, work yeah, like that. No, <laughs> so, that's not the sentiment behind what we asked for. So yeah, just no. just pick it at random. Count this up, Rob. Okay, so Sidat Barali is one. Okay, Sharon is number two. Says, what a nice guy and what an informative interview. Thank you uh, for your honesty. So Sharon is two. Sid, Sid is one. Sharon is two. Tim Paley is number three. Best of luck and a good cause. Emma Hind is number four. Hi, guys. Good luck. Paul Newbury, all the best with this, uh, is number five. Um, Sid has donated again. Well, you can, yeah, you get two chances. It's like a raffle, Sid. So you've got two chances now. You're number six. Clever. There's not that many. There's, there's, not, you know, there's not a load of people in there, so Sid's got a good chance. See, so other people are going, God, I gave a 10, I should have just donated 10, 10, 1 pounds. It's too late now. Well, Rob's called it. I didn't know what decision to make on that. His decision is final. Looks like Sid gets two goes. Um, and yeah, Sid got two goes. He's been clever. He and just Sid... used a bit of initiative. Play to him. <laughs> and Sue uh, has, has donated as well. I'm just going to refresh it, make sure no one's coming at the last minute. Okay, so I've called it on Sue. Sue's the last one. So that's uh, the number of donations is 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven. So, let's get to random.org. Can I go and make a cup of tea while you do this? No, because you... Cause you <laughs> honest to God. Because you've got, you've got to be present for this. I know. Be the prize giver. Random.org. Here we go. So, I'm going to share this with everybody. But um, it's a good website. This you don't need to do any online draws, by the way, people. What, what, or you want to choose your lottery numbers? Um, it's quite good. I'm just going to double check. I said, I said seven, didn't I? One. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, seven. So this is four. So between minimum one, maximum seven. One and seven. Let's generate a number. This is for the 12-month premium unlimited media profile to Casting Networks UK. The number it relates to is generates number five. Can everybody see five. that to say that it was genuine? Number five has come up there, yeah? I've seen number five, yeah. So I'm going to count The tension was unbearable. It's pretty unbearable, wasn't it? Um, so that is, so Sid was one, Sharon was two, Tim was three, Emma was four, Paul Newbury was number five. Paul. Well done, well done Paul. Congratulations. Thank you, thank, you, thank you again. <laughs> Everyone for donating. Thank you very much. And I hope anything that I've shared might do you might help you a little bit anyway. I hope sure so. It, sure it will. Paul, what you need to do, mate, is um, if you just follow at Act on this TV on Twitter um, and um, 
and then when she follows us, I'll follow you back, and then I'll be able to send you a direct message. Alternatively, go to the website, atsonthis.tv. At the bottom of the page, of any page, you'll see a contact form. Um, just get in touch with us on the contact form there with your email address, and I'm going to pass it on to Martin at Casting Networks and Mary at Casting Networks, and they're going to sort you out with a 12-month profile, uh, which is brilliant. So congratulations. Well done. Um, and thank you for taking part. It just shows you, take part, get rewarded. That's what it's all about, giving back. Um, definitely. Um, got a nice try, Sid, for donating twice. Good effort there, Sid. Seriously. Clever. Effort, son. Very clever. Very impressed with that. Thought he'd done it for a second there as well, but Sid was number six. Um, so Tina says, "Exciting times. You'll be great." So also said, "Come on, guys. I won last time. Get donated." Oh, of course, Tina won last time when we did a uh, live broadcast with Rachel Shenton. Um, this, these broadcasts get recorded, as I was saying, guys, and they're also going to be available to watch on the site. If you go to actsonthis.tv and go to the live recording section, you'll find a recording of our previous live broadcast with um, Rachel Shenton, fantastic, great actress, and you'll also find Rob's on there tomorrow as well. So you can listen to them completely for free. We'll watch and listen uh, completely for free. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, get involved with the next one. I don't know who our next guest is going to be. It's either going to be an a well, it could be an agent, a casting director, or a writer of a brand new ITV drama. Talking about uh, writing, I think a lot of actors. You ever, you ever, well, I know you have, Rob, because we wrote something together once. Have you ever dabbled in writing yourself, like since since that time? No, not since I, I'm still scarred from that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still scarred from what what we tried to do. Yeah. No, it's something that you know maybe future further down the line I would definitely look at when I've got a, you know you need a nice shed, don't you? A nice shed in the garden, a nice armchair, and then you can start writing. But as actors, we should be. It's so. Um, infrequent and it can be so unstable our work that it's always good to have you know lots of strings to your bow whether it be directing try your hand at writing it's 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 worth trying isn't it because you never know absolutely definitely and if the work isn't there write it make your own you know exactly it's what you can uh, what you can do um so yes yeah, so keep an eye out for our next guest um so thanks again to everybody for uh, for tuning in and taking part i hope you found it useful um, I hope we've been entertaining and, and educational to a certain degree. Um, and if you're not a member of Acts on this, if you're an actor, um, only if you're an actor, if you're not an actor, it's completely pointless, but if you're an actor, um, get yourself on to actsonthis.tv and sign up for a profile completely for free. Come and get involved with the community. Well, I'm, you need well, to get involved. Can I have free membership, please? Of course you can. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, you can when you pay me that 40 quid for your website. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that you're holding a charity to ransom for. Shame on you. So. The website's live. People can donate. It's only 40 quid off you, I need. Um, so, yeah, get yourself over. Uh, you join in the discussion in the forums. There's daily news on there. You'll find out what's being commissioned. You can look up agents, casting directors, details, get, do your CV, send it out, take part in things like this. There's podcasts on there, articles by some amazing acting coaches, uh, just all sorts of stuff about the industry. Uh, to help you get further in your career faster. Um, someone just sent a tweet through at the last minute. Thanks for your time, Rob. Appreciate it, and all the best of the future. That's from Tim Paley. Cheers, Tim. Cheers, Tim, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking part. So with that, you've done, you've done, you've done nearly an hour and a half, Rob. So thanks for that, mate. And nice, um, nice. good luck, good luck with uh, the directing if that comes off, and good luck with uh, series five if that comes off. And uh, I just want to say thank you, and good luck to everyone listening. Who you know, good luck in your careers and. And I hope something that will, stuff we've talked about today helps. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. But good luck and um, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. And also get yourself over to evilbutler.com and sponsor Rob for his London Marathon run. Because... <laughs> well, not for people who've not said he's done it twice yeah. already. Just, you know what I mean? <laughs> not, Sid, not you, Sid. No one else. But yeah, Any, anybody anyone else. Anyone else who's donating tonight is fine. They're all cool. Anyone else who might be watching this later on, evilbutler.com. Evilbutler.com. Get it done. Rock and roll. Well, thanks a lot, Rob. Enjoy the rest of your evening, mate. And uh, I'll speak to you very soon. I'll see everybody else on the site. Fingers crossed. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. We're out.